In the previous week, I went over several rules for differentiation. These rules mostly dealt with arithmetic operations, linearity for addition and subtraction, power rule for exponents, product rule for products, and quotient rule for quotients. In addition to combining functions with arithmetic operations, which I called pointwise operations earlier in the course, I can also compose functions. How do I differentiate composition? The chain rule is the method for doing so. I'm not going to give the formal background for why the chain rule, rule is true, I'll just state the result. A composition has an inside function and an outside function. In this notation, f is the outside and g is the inside. The derivative of the composition is the derivative of the outside multiplied by the derivative of the inside. However, there is a little complication. After doing the derivative of the outside, I still do the same composition with the original inside. I've shown this in Newton's notation, but I again prefer Leibniz's notation, and I think it's a little bit easier to see the mechanism here. To use Leibniz's notation for the chain rule, I need to temporarily use a new variable for the outside function. The conventional variable for this is u, and this will be used again later in the course in a couple of weeks for similar techniques. So I replace the inside function g of x with a temporary variable u for the function f. Then I differentiate the function f in this variable. This is the value of the temporary variable. It lets me see the outside function f basically by itself so that I can calculate its derivative. Then there is the, this vertical line. This notation is an evaluation bar. In various contexts in mathematics, it means complete whatever operations are before the line and then make an evaluation, a replacement. In this case, it means replace the temporary variable with the inside function g. In this way, I see that I differentiate f as its own function, but then go back to the composition by putting g in as the inside function again. Finally, all of this is multiplied by the derivative of g, which doesn't need any fancy temporary variable, it's just the derivative of g in the usual variable x. Let me do some examples. One of the most common functions in mathematics is an exponential function with base e that has a coefficient inside the exponential, e to the ax. How do I differentiate this? I use the chain rule, since this is a composition. The outside is the exponential function, and the inside is the linear function ax. I use the temporary variable u to stand for the inside function. Then the outside is e to the u, which I differentiate. I multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the outside function is e to the u. The exponential base e is its own derivative. The derivative of ax is a, since the function is a straight line with slope a. Then I use the evaluation bar and replace u with the inside ax. I do this after I've done the operation on the left of the line. The result is e to the a ax times a. By convention, it is usual to, usual to write this product with the exponential second. So I'll change the order and write this as a e to the ax. All in all, the derivative of e to the ax turns out to be just the same function, e to the ax, multiplied by the coefficient a. Here is a similar calculation with the linear function 3 to the x, sorry, 3x inside the sine function. I use the temporary variable u equals 3x to replace the inside function. Then the chain rule says, Take the derivative of the outside function, sine u, in the variable u. Then replace with u with 3x after that derivative. Finally, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of sine is cosine, which is a known derivative. You can reference all these known derivatives with the reference materials that I've produced for you, which are posted on the Moodle site, or with your own formula sheet if you already have a list of derivatives. The derivative of the inside 3x is just 3. Then I do the evaluation, replacing u with 3x to get cos 3x times 3. Again, it is conventional to write the cosine second in this kind of product, so I'll switch the order of multiplication and write this as 3 cos 3x. Here is a slightly more complicated inside function, u is equal to x squared plus 2. I write the form of the chain rule, the derivative of the outside e to the u using the temporary variable u, the evaluation bar for the eventual replacement of u, and the derivative of the inside, d dx x squared plus 2. 
The derivative of the exponential base e is the same function again, e to the u. The derivative of x squared plus 2 is 2x. Last week, I was more explicit with the steps of the polynomial derivatives using linearity carefully. Now I'm going to be a more, bit more brief, going straight from x squared plus 2 to 2x. Now I do the evaluation, replacing u with x squared plus 2 in the first term, and the result is e to the x squared plus 2 times 2x. As before, I'll switch the order of the multiplication to get the more conventional order 2x e to the x squared plus 2. Here's one more example. The inside function is a cubic polynomial and the outside is the logarithm. I apply the chain rule. I write the outside with the temporary variable, I write the evaluation bar to show the replacement of the temporary variable, and I write the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the logarithm ln u is 1 over u, which is a known derivative and on the list of derivatives in the reference materials. The, derivatives, the derivative of the cubic is 15x squared plus 7, again being more brief with my notation and hiding the use of linearity in the power rule to do this derivative. Then I do the replacement, replacing u with the whole cubic. Since this is now in the denominator, I can write the result as 15x squared plus 7 over x to 5x to the third plus 7x plus 1. Here's the last example. This is a composition of three pieces. The first outside is cosine with inside e to the 12x. Then the outside of this piece is e to the x with inside 12x. I need to do the chain rule twice. Let me show you how this works. First, I label the inside function u. When I choose how to break apart a composition for the chain rule, I want to make the outside function a function I can differentiate. Cosine u is something I know how to handle. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. Then in the second piece, I label the inside again, and I'll use a different temporary variable here, v instead of u, and label v equals 12x. For this term, I get the derivative of the outside, e to the v, the evaluation bar for v, and the derivative of the inside. In the meantime, I've done the first derivative, writing the negative sign, which is the derivative of cosine. Then I do the first replacement, replacing u with e to the 12x. Then the derivative of e to the v is just e to the v, and the derivative of 12x is just 12. And finally, I do the second replacement, writing e to the 12x instead of e to the v. And I'll also move the multiplication by 12 to the front, which is conventional. Before I finish this video, I want to give an important use of the chain rule. You might wonder how I know that the derivative of the logarithm is 1 over x. The logarithm is the, is the inverse of the exponential, and I do know how to differentiate the exponential. It would be nice if there were a consistent way to find derivatives of inverse functions. Well, the chain rule gives us such a way. An inver inverse function undoes whatever the original function did. Therefore, if I compose a function with its inverse, I get the original input back. In an equation, if f is composed with the inverse of f, I just get the variable x back. This is an equation of functions, so I can differentiate both sides. The derivative of x is 1, and the right is a composition, so I can use the chain rule. I get the derivative of the outside, evaluated on the inside, times the derivative of the inverse. Then I can solve for the derivative of the inside. All I need to do is divide by the other term on the right. The result is that the derivative of an inverse function is 1 over the composition of the derivative of the original function composed with the inverse function. This is a bit complicated, but let me show you briefly what it means in some examples. Here's the pattern of the t at the top. Let me use this to differentiate the natural logarithm. The logarithm is the inverse of the exponential, so f is the exp exponential here. The derivative of the exponential is just the f exponential, so f prime is also e to the x. Then the form tells me to compose this with the inverse, which is the natural logarithm, so I get 1 over e to the ln x. e to the ln x is just x, since they are inverses of each other, so I get 1 over x. I can also use this to differentiate the inverse trig functions. Let me show you inverse cosine. The original function here, f, is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Then I can pose with the in inverse function here, arc cosine. This is, however, a bit difficult to work with. 
what is the composition of sine and the inverse cosine? To work this out, I use the trig identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, the most important of all the trig identities. If I solve for sine in this equation, I get that sine x equals square root 1 minus cos squared x. And I can replace the sine with this to get root 1 minus cos squared of arc cos x. Then cosine of arc cosine cancel each other out. So I just get negative 1 over root 1 minus x squared. This is the derivative of the inverse cosine. And in a similar way, the derivative of the inverse sine is 1 over root 1 minus x squared, and the derivative of the inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. These are all in the reference materials, so you don't need to use this to redefine these every time you use them. However, I thought it would be good to show you where they come from. Also, these derivatives are a bit notable and surprising. The derivative of trig functions are other trig functions, but the derivative of the inverse trig functions are strange with these square roots and the 1 plus or minus x squared. This is a bit curious and a bit odd.